welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Radio Adeptus Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, and our super special guest host today is Slap. But before we get into what he's going to be doing today, if you enjoy today's episode of the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can support us and get access to uh, the Discord, bloopers if they happen. Oh, hey, Bricky, we have a new poster. Did you know that? There it is. It is the Toxic Gamer poster featuring, uh, you know, little, little, uh, hold, you know. hold on. I, I'm we'll supposed to, re- I'm supposed to react to this, so I, I just close the tab. One moment. Mm-hmm, go, mm-hmm. Give it, we, go, oh. Gotta get bro, your first reaction f- to this thing, bro. What the f- is that? That's classy. I feel like that is like the perfect gamer cave poster. Dovitos. Yeah, well, you can't put the actual name in because you know it's, it's like uh, in anime when they put in a Whack Donalds or something. Do, do they, you know? Do they have like a Doge Van Dyer hang in there poster in the backgrounds? Yeah, yeah, they do. They sure I do. Don't. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Uh, you, you know, it would. You know, it would actually. It would actually be classy if it wasn't for the f-ing stomach. Well, it's a uh, what is that the the great unclean one that has the stomach mouth usually? There's a, there's a sh- load of f- things that have the stomach mouth, but oh wait yeah, wait does he have a does it have a chewing like like cheek on the on the right side? Is it like munching? Yeah, it's totally eating some of the chips. Oh, I think my there's god. clearly something in the mouth, like little little particles. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! What did, who came up with this idea? Oh, Shai sent me the uh, work in progress, and I was just like, man, that's God tier. That's. Apparently, that this is... was all Shai's idea. God damn it, dude. Yeah. I, can't, I can't believe I'm going to have to actually sell this yeah. and, and put this on a, go- on a goddamn website and start selling it as merch. Mm-hmm. On, I still think this will be like, if you have a gamer cave, this is the poster to put in there. With like you, one of those frames that has LED lights on it. You think this is gonna sell out in, in like a day, do you? Minutes. I like don't I don't that. know if we even have that that if we have that degenerate of fans. Are you kidding? Okay, well <sighs> seconds. seconds. But patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous fifteen dollar tier, you can get this thing in H D. Hmm? Yeah. So, cool. Bricky, tell him tell him about the other stuff that you're very proud of. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we got merchandise. It's at Orchid8.com. You can get little guy hoodies and shirts. Pretty cool. You got some <laughs> posters going on there. And uh, you can also buy the... You can buy the newest Toxic Gamer poster, <laughs> both in with and without text. Yes. Uh, we, we'll sell a hundred of them, and so then then they're gone forever. So get it while you can. <laughs> and uh, we will uh, and then read Betrayer for your book club. All right, all right. DK, tell us about the man in the walls. The man in the walls. Our super special guest host today is Slap. Say hello, Slap. Hi, Slap. God damn it. I'm surrounded by nice. I'm surrounded by <laughs> uh. But slap how what how what, what's up? Um, you know, same old stuff, different day, or as I've been saying lately, same stoop, different spoon. Uh excuse me. But yeah, I've just been uh, living my life, dude. How about you two? Okay. okay. Pretty good. Um but the reason you're here, you know the reason you're here, yes? Yeah, I do actually. Okay, I'm just making I didn't sure. I did study for this at all. <laughs> just making sure that Shai didn't just like drop this on your head. No, 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 no. She she made it clear, and um, I started laughing immediately because she sent me the uh, the primer, mm-hmm. and um, it, it looks for any military folk, it, it looks exactly like our our trade doc training pl- pamphlet that they gave us in basic training. Mm-hmm. So, so why don't you tell people about your uh, experience with uh, the military? Because that's yes. that's why you're here, right? Because we yes. want to see qualifications. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How close yeah, yeah. is it to like an actual thing in the military? 
Okay, so um, I joined the army in 2008, July of 2008, and I did eight years, uh, got out in August of 2016, and that was only because of a one-month extension on one of my three deployments. Uh, I had enlisted as a human resource specialist at first and got really bored really fast, so I started looking for lateral mobility, and I became a uh, fire support specialist to work with artillerymen. And then a new position opened up in the military for at least in the army anyway, 2009, 2010 to become an electronic warfare. So I, Ooh. I shifted into that. And, um, for anyone who's paying attention to like what those occupational specialties are, the 42 alpha is the human resource. 13 Fox is the fire support specialist and 29 echo is the electronic warfare. And I deployed once as a human resource and then twice as a 29 Echo because they were in high demand. Damn. When, when you say uh, electronic warfare, is that, is that like, can you explain a little bit more about what that specifically means? My first thought says hacking, but that you is also because I'm dumb. I was thinking so. like, no, 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 no. It's stuff. actually not that far off. Electronic warfare, for what it's worth, is. It's more of a supervisor role more than anything, like an advisor as well. Like we sit in on planning and stuff like that. But the idea is um, any military action that usually involves the use of electromagnetic energy, right, to determine, exploit, reduce, or prevent hostile use of said spectrum. So if anybody's using anything that would interfere with our signals, right, and utilizing the electromagnetic oh. spectrum, we would either detect... Uh, divert you know neutralize or bypass and it's funny because that's essentially what the job boils down to i would get these threat loads and I would load them into these machines i'm trying to not to be exceptionally specific for reasons but mm. these things were really good as countermeasures so things like a cell phone or a garage door opener or things that would be conveniently used to set off remote detonating devices my boxes would intercept those signals and deny them from oh, that's activating. Cool. So you were like jamming uh, hostile yeah. signals. Nice. Well, it, it was a lot of that. I was involved in a lot of planning. And I mean, there's other perks of the job, like smart munitions and stuff like that. But that's neither here nor there. Smart munitions like uh, like like um, the electronics inside of uh, say like, a, like a tomahawk or something like that. Or any any kind of uh, any kind of missile with a computer on board, or yeah, you're right, a smart chip for what it's worth. Like, if there's a ten story building and I need this bomb to blow up on the fourth floor, can I make that happen? The answer is yes. You know, we can shoot a missile through the top, have it go through X number of floors and detonate specifically on a floor that we need based on programming. Oh man, okay, I'm sorry. We we had a good a good laugh i think in one of the prior episodes when we were talking about the the most recent missile that's just a big knife oh yeah the, <laughs> and knife, it was, missile. It, the knife missile is very imperium style release the knife yes so so that that would actually fall under that jurisdiction wouldn't it because so, it's a giant because of the, the electronics on that missile that has to be very specific essentially yeah the the knife bomb <laughs> is a really good example unfortunately <laughs> the r9x is pretty insane for what it's Re worth release the knife release yeah actually the knife. It, it does actually <laughs> imagine to be quite quite fucking accurate because it's a because you're basically it's like all right missile. you're launching for, a missile with knives attached to it yo fuck munitions we're going for direct impact boom yeah i mean it, it, it worked it got the one dude and just the one dude so so funny shout outs i guess i don't know the knife missile so so anywho <laughs> did, did we ever explain actually what this episode is supposed to be no you haven't oh shit okay so um for the viewers who don't know what's going on uh we invited slap here because of his uh prior and um you're, you're not in the reserves or anything still are you so it's no, officially no, retired no, I, am, I am officially retired uh, officially retired from uh, military service to talk a bit more about the Guardsman's Infantry Primer to give some more insight and, and uh, humorousness and how, uh, as, as we've been told by many of people, that it is quite surprisingly accurate in some ways, minus the, the propaganda and the and time frame. Um, and just, just talk a little bit more about that. Scan through it, look a little bit uh, more around and kind of find some fun things to chat about during it. 
and, uh, sure. and, and and here we are. So, um, <laughs> are, are you a are you a forty k fan slash player slap at all or? No, actually, um, I'm very infantile to the whole 40k universe. I didn't actually start showing interest or getting into it until actually you guys started doing this. Let's go. Hey, let's go. We have, let's we, go. We, have we have reach. We're having a hey. positive impact on people, I hope. It's been have fun. You, uh... No, it's it's been a lot of fun <laughs> for what it's worth. Uh, do I have favorites or anything like that? No, I don't know enough. But Oops. it's what I'm so hoping to correct for saying. what it's worth. Yeah. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Okay. What? What? <laughs> so, uh, oh, is there sure. is there any particular episode that that was part, like really far into like the oh hey this is neato like anything that, that kind of tickled your pickle? I gotta remember <laughs> the name of it. Tickled but it was pickle. a very That's early awful. one. Hold on. It was very very early. It's the Alma Tank episode. I mean, if you're going, if if we're gonna go with the the classic uh, uh, ex military 40k player, Death Corps of Krieg is pretty up there. That's fair. Or a guard episode. Or a, or a guard episode. You know, mm -hmm. it's, one, it's always one of those two. Yeah. Which, both solid choices. Is there, we have, mean, Do we have, like, cards in the in the top of the screen? Is that a thing we do? We, do, we, do, we show like that? We click at the we, top right, there's a link to the video? Or, no? We should we should show like that, because that's, that's a pretty good thing to show. The little Let's time go. cards. Yes! Yeah, put a, little put time a card up there, handy. shall I? For the, for the guard episode, for the... Put them all I over think... the place. I remember the month. It was this Necrons. Ah, Hell yeah, Necron supremacy! Let's a man go. of culture. Let's go. Hell yeah. Yeah, Necrons are, are a ton of fun. You get your, your your zombie Egyptian skeleton robots from outer space. It's fucking great. Hell yeah. Yeah, Hell it was an yeah. Am amalgamate of, uh, of some things. It's like, wow, I really like this. Yeah, they go to 40k. Anywho, uh, let us talk a little bit. So you, um, you've been you've gotten yourself a little bit of a look through of the of the primer. Was there anything in particular that you uh, that you kind of found stood out? That's like, yep, this is about right, or or has a little bit of a a tweak to it that you found kind of humorous, or any, oh, all, any all ties back? All of it is all of it. Yeah. Well, now, okay, uh, not all all of it, but specifically yeah. the very beginning, right? Because obviously it diverges. It goes off and talks about like the universe and very, you know, in canon specific oh, yeah, things yeah, yeah, yeah. about, you know, the Imperial Guard. So that's a little bit different. But all of like the pre rex stuff where it's like, this is what it means to be a soldier. This is what it means to be a member of this army. The, how you maintain yourself and your arms, your health, both physical and mental, and how you address your superiors and your... And anyone you're you're receiving an order from, period. A lot of that spun on its head is just the U.S. military, and it's it, it had me laughing a lot more than I care to admit. Specifically about the officer part, because like as a joke, we used to you're not supposed to salute an officer in the field, um, because if the enemy were watching, they would now know who's in charge, right? So we oh, used to smart. say we used to say sniper check as a joke to to like officers in the field, but only in training, never like actually on a deployment to go sniper check. And if the officers are aware of their surroundings, they will not salute back because you don't want anybody to know that they're in charge. So like, but everywhere else in garrison specifically, if you don't salute an officer, they get so mad at you. Not enough to obviously flay and shoot you, but. <laughs> They'll, no they'll damn i was hoping that was real real mad at you <laughs> so so it was really it was really interesting because like reading through the primer there's like creeds and codes and like all of the rules and regulations struck me as similar to the general orders specifically like in the u.s army we got my first general order is i will guard everything with the limits of my post and quit my post only when properly relieved right like that's our first general order and these are like rules and stuff like that that if you don't get an order to leave you are staying and that's how it is in the army that's that's exactly how it is you you will not leave unless you are relieved period M and minus like, the it, um the if you leave your post you will be flayed and then shot uh, flayed flogged shot sometimes flayed by the person who gave you the order if you just yeah you know it's all that hmm Sounds realistic. But it's yeah. it's it's really it's really interesting. Even down to the um 
the things they give you, right? Like you get a couple of battle dress, some shirts, undershirts, you know, garments, flak, you have body armor, you have your weapon, you have magazines, you have extra clips for your pistols and stuff like that. Like if I could show you the list of gear, like the thousands of dollars the army gives me and then compared it to the primer, it'd be almost one for one. Damn. No kidding. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was that was the one that I, I that struck me as particularly accurate sounding. Mm -hmm. I still just have the, my the items. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, it's it, like the rain overalls. It's like a full set for us. It's like three pieces. They just have it listed there as one, whatever. Frag grenades, okay, we don't get that unless we're in the field. Blah blah blah. But you know, range finders, the maintenance kit specifically, because there's a thing that tells you what's in the maintenance kit. I'm like, this is an M16 kit. It's a rifle cleaning kit. That's all it is. But it's futuristic because it's a laser gun. And it's uh, <laughs> and it's religious because it's the Imperium. Because like, I, I, I was thinking about that because they have the, the last gun maintenance kit, which I'm assuming could just be replaced with a M4 or whatever maintenance kit. But of course, they have the the say, uh, the blessed sight caliber and the bottle of sacred oil of lubrication instead of <laughs> cleaning oil. Yeah, yeah. Just a literal bottle of lube. Yeah. The entrenching tool that we have one of those two, like that specifically, the f fucking shovel. Yeah, ours is by Gerber, but whatever. We have one. And it's like, it's it's interesting. The tender box as well. So if you need to start your own fire in the field, all of the rations, the boot laces, the glasses, the sleeping bag, blanket, all of it. Almost one for one. I, I uh, you know, I did realize the shy put something in the chat. I was like, yeah, people called me and DK dumb because like yeah, they carry four sandbags. Like, damn, that's really heavy. How would you carry that? I, I kind of realized that like once we finished the episode, I was thinking <laughs> to myself, like, I bet the sandbags are empty. I bet they just carry around the, the, the base bag. <laughs> My guy, I don't even remember saying that, but it sounds like some stupid shit I would say. Sure. So, yeah. Uh, you sense. know what? I'll, I'll I'll take the heat for you, DK. I said it. You just agreed oh, with it. Fucking Bricky, confusing me again and making me look stupid. Completely out of my control. Unbelievable, actually, Bricky. Actually, if I if <sighs> I say that you believed me, then this and that that goes back to the Star Wars thing. It's like who's the real fool? The fool or the fool that follows him? Shut up. Okay. <laughs> just, just, just shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up, <laughs> just shut up man. I don't, just shut up. You're dumb. That's the, that's the moral of the story. You're um, in in the actual uh, uh, what, what would what would your primer be called? I can actually send you a link. To oh, our... sick. I just want you to understand when you click this right and you open it, you're literally gonna see what I mean by it. like it. It starts with a four word explains to you what it's like to be in the military it even gives you like a rundown of the army and then it goes through the contents which will essentially be like our version of like the principles and regulations right and you're gonna see exactly what i mean when looking at this so, so that it's... is the tp 600-4 it's one of our trade -oc army pamphlets the tp literally just training pamphlet number 600-4 and they give that to all new soldiers in basic training so we get like indoctrinated and beat immediately with that information and it sounds like in the primer they do the same thing <laughs> they, they want you to be aware of where you are the purpose you serve and how there is no higher purpose Wow. Yeah, so they they really pushed that higher purpose one in the primer, no doubt. Yeah. Uh so it's so it's entirely death, possible dude. that Games Workshop <laughs> just looked at one of these training pamphlets and was like, Yeah, we want to make this as close to a real training pamphlet as possible and actually like you know, used some source material to make it accurate. I would not doubt it. It's like going through it, there were a few things where I'm like okay, I can see where the fantasy kicks in, but um, mm. even like the gas mask, like on page 25 of the primer, that's just a World War II gas mask. Like that's... Oh, yeah. It's, it's just the one for one on that. But like the purpose that each piece serves, the purpose that each piece of equipment serves, even though it's futuristic, is you, if you were to pick this up yourself, you, you would use it the exact same way it's written. 
There's, a, there's almost no discrepancy on it. And I found it interesting too, because they have like rank structure, company structure, you know, they go through map reading, they have scouting, movement, use of cover as a thing, cover me while I move the whole filing and rank files. There's just a lot to it. Obviously, for I, I, basic training, we don't deal with anti-air or anti-tank stuff. That's more specific to, like, your job in the military. But, like, yeah. everything else is pretty on point. I must admit, I'm I'm scrolling through this, uh, the, the, T, the P, TP600 that you sent. And I, I kind of hate the fact that this looks so much like my old Boy Scout books. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like just replace yeah, like you know, just replace that. soldiers with boy scouts and like the way they're doing the uniform and the way they're like, like it's it's shockingly similar and i'm, I'm pretty positive <laughs> that the, probably the boy scouts did that on purpose they they because it originated probably at somewhere near the time but wow like like even the way that the the images are very cruelly like put in like like you mm -hmm. try to put a, an image in during like a, like a microsoft word type Inline. thing like it's just it's been <laughs> slapped in yeah and it's it's so the indentations and the like it, it, it's it's so similar to my old boy scout manuals god damn I was kind of curious. So like the uh the, the Imperial Infantryman's uplifting primer has just all of the propaganda that has ever existed uh and just totally like uh uh misinforms them about like uh you know enemies, combatants and stuff like that. I'm sure the real one doesn't but like what's is there any like propaganda in the military that's like kind of like a little I don't want to say sus, but it's just a little <laughs> overbearing. Sus? Not so much anymore. Not so much anymore. So they really um, dialed back on what could be considered like propaganda, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's not fact, we just don't discuss it anymore. And I say that from someone who's sat through a couple of meetings with the intelligence like shop of my uh, brigade. Right, like it's we we sit in these meetings and we talk because we view the propaganda too, like mm. we we view it, like we actively see what's being pushed out by other countries about us, and sometimes we get a good laugh out of it, but then you know the brains behind the operation might be like, oh well, you know that could pose a problem to this particular sect of people, blah blah blah, because they'll believe it. Oh, yeah. And then we have to, like, adjust the tone of the meeting to address this thing that we previously thought was absolutely hilarious, which is now, you know, a threat for consideration. And it's it's interesting because in the primer, uh, dude, it's all bets are off. Oh, it's yeah. just out there. <laughs> the the primer is absolutely all bets off. Like, oh, my God. Like, you in, in, the, in the 40K primer, they're just like, yeah, we're just going to print whatever that makes us sound good. And we're going to make the enemy sound like absolute idiots that anybody could kill a child could kill they're so stupid they can't aim stupid xenos that they do that though so that's one of the they used to do that in the military they used to to a degree oh yeah you dehumanize well, your enemy yeah yeah like back in like uh world war one and two like the, oh, the amount of man. crazy yeah. propaganda yeah you dehumanize them you give them nicknames you don't treat them like people it made mm. war crimes like breathing like you could just do things because you thought less of them yeah. right like they just were less than you and they've done so much to squash that like in today's military sure but that's it was the wild west the way things were run back then okay. yeah I, I despite them being very racist i i oh, find yeah. the old world war ii propaganda posters to be quite humorous i the style has got such like from a different time energy that I find it kind of kind of funny. I, I um, still can't to, get though. over. You, you I still have can't to look get at over, it that way. But, I can't get yeah. over like the Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck like uh, propaganda cartoons that kids would watch, and it's just like, damn, like y'all went crazy with this. Like you turn like childhood cartoon huh, into like war propaganda. It's like holy shit. All bets are indeed off. Like you're like indoctrinating children <laughs> yeah it's awful dude 
So, so I'm actually looking at um, the 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 uh, team 600 still, and I'm at page 99, and it says uh, critical information required for BCT OSU, etc. It's ranking senior basically, uh, and the first one, uh, uh, private the E1, it says no Chevron. Are you not allowed to own a car? Oh yes. my car! No car. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> pretty. <laughs> 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 DK's no fight, like he like deflated like a pop balloon. <laughs> Actually, um, no. This is interesting. That's interesting. So those ranks, right? Look at them in the primer. Um, the there, it's just the same thing, just extremely condensed. Mm -hmm. The exact same, just completely condensed. <coughs> right. Yeah. They don't have they don't have like the the logos or anything. But yeah, it's the like the trooper. Corporal, sergeant, etc. I actually, I did have a, a real question about these ranks. Um, I know that there's, there's like, I always thought there was two. I could be wrong about this, but there were two separate variations of rank. There's like an officer rank and a regular rank, and you start with one and you work your way up, or do you go from like in like a direct line all the way to the top? So there's technically three. Um, there's technically three, and everyone starts from the bottom of whatever tier or section they're going into um so for the enlisted the enlisted soldiers those are the privates private uh private first class specialists you know all the way to sergeant sergeant first class master sergeant, etc all of the e ranks that's what the e stands for enlisted and then you have the warrant officer ranks which for lack of better terms are just specialists they are officers but specialists war or specialist officers so they don't have like leadership positions like the o ranks the officers and uh familiar with like rotc right with yeah, rotc yeah, yeah. you have like lieutenants like they'll they're cadets and when they graduate from the rotc program they're lieutenants so they'll come out we call them butter bars in the military because they're just like this little gold bar um we call them butter bars they're, those are our second lieutenants they would effectively vie for position in the active duty it's not as you know and in, in, i guess we'll put it this way in the new york army national guard or any other national guard for what it's worth to get promoted someone has to either rank out or die like there's no way around it there's just a lot of people in the seats but officers are the ones in charge they will linear transfer so you were absolutely on the money with that it's just straight up they'll go from one to two to three all the way to however high they're gonna go hmm. okay uh shy had a question when you uh when you were finished with that topic uh so shy said i have a question for another aspect of the army slap in the primer they obviously go wild on the faith praising emperor and even including various prayers i know several armies in the world actually go hard on religion like russia and some muslim countries where they deploy priests with the army how is that in the u.s army so in the U.S. Army, we have a job specifically for religious affiliations, um, and it's it's your chaplain, your chaplain, or your chaplain assistant, right? They're called uh, Fifty Six Mikes. That's their MOS for those who wanted to look it up. Five Six Mike. Um, they're they're and they can be any denomination, right? So Christian, Muslim, you know, they could be Jewish as well, and. So while it's not like pushed, it's available. So if you were religious in the U.S. Army, you could seek out the chaplain and, you know, practice your faith, however. But the military no longer like pushes it. Like even in the, uh, in the, um, God, what's it called? The Oath of Enlistment. The final line is now optional. It used to be, so help me God. Right. But you can oh. opt to not say it anymore if that's not your belief correct you can straight oh. up just deny it now you don't have to say anything that's... however i will say when i enlisted when i didn't say so help me god because i'm not a very religious person i could see the light in the nco who was reading me <laughs> just die a little bit oh <laughs> The Emperor's there are light some faded. people, yeah. There are some people who do wish, um, you know, religion had more of a place in the military. But I'm kind of glad it doesn't. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to 
quell anyone's beliefs, but it feels like the military is probably one of those places where maybe not so much uh, religious fervor. Church maybe, and yeah, church, church, maybe church and state. Yeah, church, church and state. state. Church and state for sure, for sure. Um, so did you ever have to deal with any psychers? <laughs> <laughs> you know. <coughs> Inquiring minds want to know, Slap. Inquiring any crazy psychers? Know. Any <laughs> blanks? Any, 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 anyone besides the drill instructor able to read your mind, you know? <laughs> Listen, man. Sometimes it feels like they know they're being watched, so maybe that's psychic ability? I don't know. I mean, that, that, a little uneasy that would around be a, them, you know? Yeah, that would be a psychic ability, you know, to know that you're being watched, certainly. <laughs> that is a thing they could do. Um, you do you so they not get cars? Do you deal with psychers? <laughs> really spot on today, Brick. You are, you I'm are trying running to, all cylinders, my guy. He's <laughs> got to bring it wind back. it. Yeah, he's got to bring it. Back. <clears throat> yeah, I got. I got to bring you guys back. Actually, um, that actually is, is, a, is a side note thing because you because you mentioned that you had your um, ironically you had a chaplain, which is hilarious to me because you know in 40k there are chaplains. 40k chaplains, yeah. Um, yeah. Except the difference is, is they they run up to you with a crozius and beat the fuck out of you with it. <laughs> um, because you know 40k. Well, well, our chaplains carry a gun, so. <laughs> Yeah, but does he beat the the fuck out of you with it? They don't. They don't. We have chaplain's assistants. It's another job in the military. They do the beating. Oh, excellent. Okay. The chaplain's okay. You just got to watch out for the assistant. Yeah, I don't have a pocket healer, dude. I have a pocket aggressor. (laughs) (laughs) That was good. Clean, smooth, awesome. Mm, mm, Um, mm. So actually, in curiosity, because of the chaplain and all that, obviously the last couple of pages of the primer are mainly prayers litanies of, of clean cleanliness and, and many other innuendos that might mm. uh, get us age restricted again um <laughs> but uh as for the actual like I, i'm assuming that in the this this book there is no final prayer section or anything like that but do they have like things like prayer books and stuff if you ask the chaplain for one? Oh yeah absolutely absolutely is it mainly like like what because, I mean, a prayer book, is it mainly, like, the Holy Bible, Christian Catholic kind of thing? Or is it, you know, could you get, like, a, other various types? You can get other other uh, versions of whatever you wanted, actually. And I think the one that I had um, on my second deployment, because that one was a little rough for me, no lie. I had a, a Catholic one with a bunch of just verses in it. And that's all it is. It's not like a full book. It's like this small little notepad size thing that just has passages on it. And that's that's all it is. And you can get them for whatever faith you you have. And okay. then what they'll do is they'll section them off like one of those self-help books, you know what I'm saying? Where one's like, oh, for good fortune or for peace of mind, for whatever. And like they're just organized passages for these very specific things okay so so it, it's it's not a uh it's obviously not an imperium forced on your throat kind of thing but it is an option if you wanted it mm. yeah i'm actually kind of surprised because like the uh the the military like uh, handbook you sent has like the end has like all of these like oh look at all the amazing victories that the uh the the military has won like going back to like uh Delaware and Trenton. I'm kind of surprised the uh, the the primer doesn't have like a section like that. It's like, oh, look at all the amazing victories of the oh. Imperium and the Emperor is great, and look at this battle we won. Unless I skimmed over it and didn't see it, I'm kind of surprised the the primer doesn't have like just a long list of look at our achievements and how great we are, and look at all the amazing soldiers and praise them. Why don't you? I think because in the primer is actually just implied. Like you're here because you know we're the best and you want to be a part of the best kind of Fair. thing. Fair. Okay. It's like there because like it's actually in one of their rules and regulations. Like you don't question the the orders from any form of superior. So if someone's telling you like yeah we're good, you're not supposed to say we're not. You, know, you just don't <laughs> do fair, that. Yeah. Damn. But yeah, right. What's, it's, it's uh, really cool. Okay, I this is a long shot, but I have to ask. Oh no. Is there is there a is there a know your enemy section of it at all? 
I, like I know that like I know there's a certain level of, of of variation when it comes to how to deal with like oh if you're taking fire do X Y and Z if you suspect IED do X Y and Z but is there any particular like thing for because because obviously in the primer there's know your foes because they're fighting aliens, mm -hmm. um, but was there like you're being deployed to Afghanistan the common practices of the enemy are X Y and Z or is that more taught to you when you get there? Oh no, dude, you're on the money, bro. Yeah, that's a, dude, that was a good question. That, that was even a long shot, dude. That was a really good fucking question, dude. Good on you. <laughs> I was so expecting some we... super dumb shit when he said no, long shot. <laughs> he's on it. So, like the know your enemy esque conversations, we absolutely had those for not just for the countries, but for the regions as well. So, specifically, when I was in Iraq, we before we went there, I stopped off in Kuwait and sat through like two weeks of briefs which was essentially a know the area know your enemy and we went over common tactics you know um on more of like the this pertains to my job aspect of it like the types of transmitters and receivers they use like we learned everything about their combat strategy all of the forms of different guerrilla and urban warfare all of it like we learned that before we get there and then we do refreshers when we get there so yeah it's it's similar okay but none, none of it's really involved in the book though no 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 because of how vast the reach is we kind of right. have to specialize yeah. that You'd makes have, sense. You, you need a whole separate book if you were going to cover every potential threat right so it's better oh yeah just dude no, we were, it's the brief best, people dude. when you get there yeah i, I remember i had a I had a buddy who um, who mentioned he was he had, was at a base and it was one of those bases that's like uh, for some goddamn reason was put in the middle of like a ditch like like surrounded by mountains in every direction and uh, they were had a uh, lights out base word basically you're not supposed to have any lights on and 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 the idea is that like if you smoke you have to like cover it because if you say they see light you might get shot at. Because mountains surrounding it. I'm assuming that's sure. like a thing that's like, hey, we are a, uh, I think lights out was the word, I don't quite remember, kind of base, like this is what you got to do because there are people all over around here. Did he go to Afghanistan by any chance? I don't remember. My mind says maybe. Because it, it sounds like Bagram, or at least close to Bagram. Cause it's like really mountainous and stuff like that. And like, Oh dude, they had a Valley that was very much like what you're describing. It's just, no one wanted to go through it for that exact reason. Yeah, I, I don't just, really remember. I remember him telling me that there was, it was surrounded by mountains in every direction. And I was like, wow, they build a base there. And he was like, I don't know why they built a base for them. They put a base there. <laughs> I yeah, don't it does seem like a poor place for a base when it's like, Oh yeah. Let me just light up a, sp like, damn, that's crazy. I do the, yeah, light pollution was very, very real thing. We had filters on all of our flashlights to keep them like dimmer and stuff like that. If you did smoke, you did have to cover it and everything. It was Damn. weird. That's hardcore. Times. I mean, you need to for <laughs> the aforementioned reasons, but damn, that's crazy. I, yeah, why would I you build a base uh, in, in an area like oh, that? You, you know, I've been told that, I mean, you could tell me if this is true or not slap, but the more you, you enter the military, the more disorganized you realize it is and... It's oh, dude, yeah. It's like <laughs> getting to know your hero up close. Oh, no. It, oh, no. it re really is, dude. When I, jo when I joined the military, I think the fucking the wool got pulled from my eyes. Like, I want to oh, say no. like five or six years in. So I only dealt with it for two more years. But like, you start realizing that people are either really fucking dumb <laughs> or that no one just knows what's going on anymore. And there's like a select group of people that do. And if you don't get in with that group, you're you're screwed just, you're just there you're along for the ride dude jeez what about we uh, rose tinted glasses and they got cracked yeah but we got a lot of survival techniques in the in the primer and i know most of these are um with the exception of some of the the traps they make because you know they have the classic like if you're on an alien planet be careful what you eat because oh god um, was there any particular, like, survival techniques that kind of stuck, stuck out to you in, in, uh, that were just kind of like, huh, that's weird, or huh, that's interesting? Um, 
Not, not particularly. I feel like they actually just did everything correct. Like, cause it's the whole finding water aspect, right? Like that they teach that exactly in the, in like survival schools of the military. Cause they don't go over survival in the, in basic training. You have to do a different school for that. It's called seer training. It's like search and counter. Like if you ever, it's to prep you if you ever became a prisoner of war, basically. Like, how do you survive in the wild if you got separated from your platoon or maybe your helicopter got shot down? Now you're just out here. So you go through like seer training. And that whole training is basically section 19 of the primer. Like all of it. Find water. When you said said seer training, my mind immediately went to Titanfall and I got excited and then I got sad. Oh, shit. Poor guy. Uh, I was thinking, good old seer, end of the game, get your smart pistol. What was it? It was a survive, evade, resist, and escape. It was cool. Yeah. Like, it goes over. No, it's cool. It's cool. It goes over everything. The only thing I would say that the army does a little bit different is they even go over, like, um, like bugs and shit. Really? Like we, yeah, we go over like uh, like this, uh, like what to avoid, you know, if you see bugs doing certain things like this, this, the primer very much is find water, eat meat. Like you're looking for birds, you're <laughs> looking for small animals in the army. They're like, dude, they're, these are the plants you can chew. These are the bugs you can eat. These are the, the things mm-hmm. you can do to trap small prey, find water, fishing. It's like a start your own life out there kind of thing. But yeah, the survival techniques are all there. I've that heard makes the bugs sense that you the, have uh... to. Uh... Yes, DK? I was going to say, it makes sense that you would need training on if you got separated or if you were like a prisoner of war and you you had to survive out by yourself until somebody could come and get you and like put oh, bugs yeah. to eat because in a pinch that's that's protein that's food yeah they make every pilot in the US army go through seer training i've uh, i've been told that the um that the bugs out in uh in the middle east are particularly nasty fuckers they can be oh i, f- I feel like you're talking very specifically about the camel spider or wind scorpion definitely the camel the, spider the what <laughs> Well, yeah, so the camel spiders are actually called wind scorpions. Uh, don't don't okay. worry, DK. I I got you, buddy. Don't don't you worry. Click on this wonderful Google search and feast your eyes on nature's oh nature's my Satan. God. <laughs> what is that? It's a camel spider. I hate it. These are real yeah. things, dude. These they're are real they're life tyrannids. Called, you know why they're called camel spiders? Because they kill camels. No, they have a vertical leap to reach a camel's belly. What? <laughs> Yeah. That's a big leap. Oh, fuck these things, dude. They can uh-uh. run upwards of like 10 miles an hour. And like all oh they were God. a big problem when we first got there. Holy um, shit. <laughs> because they're, they're, they have like a numbing agent in their mouth. So like they could be chewing on you and you wouldn't even know. Oh, God, I hate so, it. <laughs> so when they were first setting up <laughs> bases it, and shit like that, they got in the habit of beating their sleeping bags just in case. Oh my god! How so? How big? How big are these things? Like a dinner plate. Like, oh no! <laughs> oh no! Like I saw these pictures, and I was like, okay, maybe it's like the size of like a tarantula. Oh no! I hate it. They can a, be small. That's a fucking tyranid. That's a nid. <laughs> I mean, no. From what I've seen of tyranids, yeah, they're pretty, pretty close. That's but, a uh, monster mesh. Holy shit! Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, man. We learned more about them too. They scream and everything. It's it's awful. They scream. Yeah. So if you're ever being followed by one, not that you're ever in danger of being followed by one, but if you ever were, it's just trying to stay in your shadow, right? Because it doesn't like direct sunlight. Oh. And if you notice it and start running, it will actively chase you because it's trying to stay in your shadow. Oh, I hate it. That's so the- that's kind of hilarious and also <laughs> horrifying, but kind of funny. Yeah. It's horrifying. Um, That's so. Shy House has another question. She says the in-universe oh. primer is considered to be worthless toilet paper by guardsmen, and you learn all the useful skills from veterans who serve with you. Uh, how does that compare to act, uh, real life military? Oh, uh, that's a fair God, question, Shy. Dude, okay, you, yeah, the, I I learned this from the first NCO I spoke to when I deployed. The first casualty of any battle is the plan. So, like, (laughs) 
you go through all of this like training you go through all of this learning how to use your weapon and everything about the country that you're in the people that you're fighting you know the bugs that you can eat and shit like that right but the moment shit hits the fan bullets start flying people start panicking the first thing that goes out the window is the plan so yes you listen to the veterans more than you'll ever listen to what's regurgitated off a piece of paper that is a hundred and ten percent that's, That's so terrible. funny that you say that too, because there's there's the old Mike Tyson quote, which is everybody has a plan until they get punched they get in, the in the face. Yep. It's so true. <laughs> oh. well, what was the, what's the other no, no, no. Um, what's the other famous one? It's uh, no plan survives contact with the enemy. I think is that, is that what never it's heard that one. Uh, I, I thought that yeah, was no that. plan survives first contact with the enemy. That's um, Eisen Eisenhower. I think. Hey, mm-hmm. I know a thing. Look at so you, about that, So about that Chevron. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Is it Eisenhower? It's somebody. It's someone who's way smarter than me. All but of like, us, actually. But okay. It's, okay, yeah. It's, it's what it is. Because, like, they, you, you panic. You panic. It's like they tell you, remember your training, remember your training, right? Well, it's hard to remember your training when you're as green as can be. Yeah, and it's All a life and death new. situation. Yeah. So the veterans, like the people who have been there longer, I'm assuming just like the primer, or at least in the Imperial Guard, that you're going to listen to the people who've been there longer than you. Oh, yeah. Because you definitely do in the military. Oh, my God. I, I, like, I do wonder because like the, the, yeah, cause the primer, like the advice in there is genuinely awful. Because they need to paint you <laughs> propaganda wise as superior than the aliens. Mm-hmm. But then you meet the veteran who's survived contact with the orcs and he was like, Yeah, all my friends got ripped in half because he's a fucking orc and he's he's seven foot tall and, and made of beef. Yeah, and yeah. none of their tech makes any sense. Yeah, nothing 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 works. He had a giant red button on his car that says go and he slapped it. And he went really fast and it was very red, and I don't know what happened, <laughs> but my buddy got just run over and I don't have anything left of him except a tooth. I mean, no, that, no, <laughs> teeth. It's currency. That's true. It's uh, well, it's orc teeth for the currency, right? Do they care about human teeth? That's a good point. I don't know. Anyway, continue. Slap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do orcs care about human teeth? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Google. <laughs> That's gonna keep me up forever, dude. Um, hey Siri. No, it's, it's funny though, because like the whole indoctrination thing. That's essentially what they do, right? Like. Mm-hmm. My experience in basic training was genuinely awful. Like, and I don't know if everybody shares that sentiment that's been in the military or not, but it's just awful, dude. I spent like 10 weeks sleeping maybe four hours a night, lucky, and then staying up till God knows when and still managing to like eat some food and stay alive for what it's worth. It was just genuinely off. It's mind breaking. Right. So they like, they break you down a hundred percent. They break you down. And the entire time they're instilling within you, the, the soldier's creed, the warrior Mm. ethos, your general orders, you know, remember your oath of enlistment. What are our army values and singing cadence everywhere you go, walking 10 miles and crying about it, but still singing because why not? Well, that's the whole uh, breaking you down to build you back up, right? They gotta they gotta kick all the bad habits and then instill all of the military habits, all of the oh, hard 100%. habits, right? Hundred yeah. percent. So we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, I th- that was a guy. He got fired, by the way. So he probably wasn't on the money with that. But <laughs> he was um he was very. We're gonna beat the civilian out of you. Like that was his whole premise. Oh, and like I distinctly remember him saying. You are no longer a civilian, and we're going to beat it out of you. And I didn't know Holy how to take shit. it at the time, but uh-huh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, you're not a civilian anymore. Damn. Do y'all have like a songbook where for all the, oh, yeah. all the, yeah, all the March songs? Kind of like, kind of like in the, in the primer. They got like the little songbooks and the little, little prayer booky thing. It's, I mean, it's, I guess that's a prayer book. I guess, book you know what? That would chant. be, that would be it, right? That would be it. There's like, we have marching cadences and running cadences yeah. um, mm-hmm. on like various PDFs and stuff like that, but they're not like doctrine or anything like that. 
Uh, true. But the, the 40K one is a bit of a stretch. It's a bit, <laughs> of, a, bit of an exaggeration, right? <laughs> Something to, similar to, to that exists. Platoon leader, yeah. man. That was my thing. Oh, let's go. Yeah, I used to I used to run my my platoon through drill. That was the that was the whole bit. I loved marching cadence. It was probably one of the best things about it because just like in everything else, man, just if it sucks, as long as it sucks with other people, it's not so bad. Yeah. Uh Shai said there was a moment in one of the books DK wanted to see in the primer episode, by the way. Newbie guardsman meets an orc for the first time and barely survives and is horrified because it's not at all as harmless as the primer described, and veteran guardsmen are laughing their asses off at him because he wasn't fighting an orc, he was fighting a Gretchen. Oof. <laughs> That's Which is basically like a little little goblin version of an orc. Yeah, it's the tiny little not as savage version of an orc. It's it's the little they're like these little goblins that the orcs like, oh, you fuck, cause you're weak, and they just kind of kick them around for fun. <laughs> this is like a with that species. accent, with that accent, this will ride it, kids. Yeah, that's the, good. Uh, that's that's really good. <laughs> the the, the orc the orc voice is is always a it's is always a treasure. Ever since we found out that DK can do a very good one, it's been all he's all he's been forced to do which is great for me because i don't have to try and good for all of us because uh money thank god for brutal cunning right <clears throat> yeah i think yeah he did a good that's, job with that's, that too. that's where i learned how to do it yep you got a you got a gas mask in uh, in your stuff right yeah we have, how we have how was that of it i, I wore, i've worn a gas that? mask before <laughs> I, I well i've worn a gas mask before and i i feel like the thing that i should be more scared of is, is not the gas because it feels like i'm fucking suffocating in there oh yeah it's, i've never worn a gas mask i don't know what that's like at all it's claustrophobic if you have if you're in any way shape or form claustrophobic it sucks it's because it's supposed to be so so tight like we're talking like mr freeman face hugger tight like it's well yeah because you don't want anything getting in right <laughs> yeah yeah and like you know my experience with cs gas and shit like that just tells me i'm glad it's that tight but yeah, it is a little claustrophobic, especially if the filter's like old, right? Because it's harder to breathe oh, through the filter no. when it's old. So it's like, yeah. oh god, it does feel like you're suffocating, Bricky. It's it's awful if you have an old filter as well. I, I well, did a. I... Uh, I was saying I did um a yeah. couple of drills uh back when I was doing a uh, fire tech. Uh, when I was training to do firefighting stuff, and I remember one of them was having to squeeze your way through like. A really tiny like uh, web of of debris. You know, it's only it's only about the width of your shoulders, a little bit more, with with one of the uh, the oxygen mask on. And I remember, uh, I remember not not particularly liking that. It, oh, it was not I, what I would call too fun. I would have genuinely, a panic don't blame you. <laughs> I would have a yeah, panic no, attack and need to be rescued. That yeah, one. we had this we had this poor gal who was certainly claustrophobic when she was in the training, and, and she. She was not doing well. She was full full stop in tears, and it was. Uh, I, it's I don't but she her. she fucking she fucking did it though. She went through the whole thing, but what I was a, like, what a, what a champ. Yeah, but it was like, God, it's rough. Yeah, I would I would make it. Shy said she wears a gas mask when she primes miniatures with spray paint, and she wants to die. I gotta believe those are the ones that only like cover your mouth, right? And you guys are talking about like the full face ones, right? I mean, I mean, I, I know they don't wear. They don't really have those old school like World War One looking hose ones anymore, like they do in 40k. But sure, things like that. Okay. Um, what, you, I see you posted uh, the command um, structure, a company structure. Slap. What's uh, what's up with that? So, it's the same. Like identical. It's a, yeah, it's it's the same. So in a platoon, you have somewhere between you know, four to five squads, sometimes more, sometimes less. And they they all fall under whoever's in command. And then however many, you know, platoons will make up the company, which will X number of companies will make up your battalion. Then your battalions make up your brigade and all the way up to HQ, which is your brigade. All of the various attachments are your various battalions and the heavy weapon squads are like, for us, they were like, you know, attack helicopter uh, battalions and stuff like that. Just that's our artillery support that aren't directly a part of, you know, one of the lower companies or 
you know, they just don't have platoons of them. They're full on shops of it. It's, it's, it's essentially this. God damn. damn. For a second, sweet. I thought you, uh, I thought you posted that out of the uh, actual military when that was like Lehman Russ. Oh shit. That's, that's from the primer. It's like, oh yeah. Okay. Damn. All right. Hot damn. Hot damn. Hot, hot, hot damn. Hot damn. That damn As is smoking hot. It is smoking. Uh, you know, we're ro we're kind of rolling around at the end here for the episode. Is there anything else that really stuck out to you, Slap, that you can think of? Because I'm I'm kind of out of ideas. But the section eight of the <laughs> of the primer, the security Secur of the column, the security of the column. I want you to know that that is exactly how we move when we move in large formation, straight up. In the, fact, uh, a lot of their movement oh. stuff is exactly the same as us. And I died at section nine as well. The whole, cause like, it's hard to look past like him kind of, I'm a Gears fan, right? I like Gears of War. It's hard to look past like chest high walls and stuff like that. But how this dude looks in the images, just holding his weapon and how he's leaning is, <laughs> we had pamphlets with the same type of images, but with one of us doing it. That, that's so funny to me, because it actually looks like he's far too exposed. I thought he would be a lot more crouched behind the cover. Yeah. Oh, very much so. Very much okay. so. But that's like specifically standing behind cover, right? Like you should be kneel, kneeling behind it and all that other stuff. But the movement stuff really sent me for a trip because I was reading through it and it's like, they go over like when the column is attacked from the front and what's the scout's job is and you know the the importance of the main body and the importance of the rear guard advance guard because the advance guards are full of your scouts and you know your flanks and all of that is so good it's so good so Damn. it's safe to say that gw when they were making like the guard and the military aspect of like the imperium they it sounds like they did their homework and it sounds like they actually, you know, true to true to real life a little bit in terms of a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I, I would. I, I think it's safe to say that. Sorry, I got distracted reading what I was writing there about comments. OK, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's it looked like a lot of the tactical side of the primer. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about in meetings, we've sat down through briefs and gone over we've had classes on it like the land navigation portion of it where they go over with the compass and such like how to actually read a map and stuff like that we obviously go a little more in depth in in the u.s army but as far as the primer is concerned it's like yeah it's a very cursory look of what you'd expect from like u.s land nav how to use your compass, how to read the map, what the size of the grid is, and, you know, how to determine the distance. Like, it's all there, <clears throat> and it's very tactical. So outside of the propaganda and the fact that they're in space and their whole body is very religious and that, you know, the enemies they face are also varying, like, wildly, it's almost one for one. And I like when Shy sent it yeah. to me and I was looking at it, I was like, this is, has to be a joke. What is this? <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, this looks like the TP. And I pulled up the TP and then right from the forward down, I was like, you got to be shitting me. <laughs> so if you strip away the 40K stuff, it's essentially like the TP. If you strip away the 40K stuff, yeah, you're looking at like a Eagle Scout, Boy Scout, ROTC. Um, basic training, a little bit of AIT, like you get a lot of stuff that is definitely well researched. Then you throw in the uh, the the <coughs> flogging and and then the fear of God put into you, and then bada bada bing bada boom, gets kill some kill some aliens. Yeah, you get a yeah. pamphlet, you get all that stuff with a little bit of flogging. Who doesn't like that? All right, is there anything <laughs> left we should we should hit, or are we good? Uh, not unless you guys have questions about anything like specific, but I'm I'm pretty uh, good. I think we hit it. Yeah, no. I think we hit it. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Well, uh, yeah, I brother. would normally uh, I would normally take us out, but um, DK, I'm gonna make you do it. Me? Why do I have to do it? Because I, I said so. Oh. 
Well, hey, everyone, thanks for listening. And again, consider patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous. Uh, our special guest today was Slab. Um... Slab, I guess where can where can the people find you if they would like to interact further with you? Uh so you can find me specifically on either Twitter or Twitch. Um I'm beginning the YouTube journey, just no information disclosed on that yet because I'm trying to get all that stuff put together. And I effectively haven't really done much with content in over a month because of a new full time job and a lot of responsibilities, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at I'm Slap, at I M underscore Slap, or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Slap, and YouTube coming soon. You're actually oh, yeah. able to get you're actually able to get the the Slap URL. For yeah, Twitch. the four letter oh. moniker, dude. I damn reached out to the you know partner managers when those existed, and uh, straight up asked, said, "Hey, is it available? If so, do not email me back. Just change my name." And within 24 hours, I had a name change. Dope. Wow. Yeah, that's sick. Uh, but that's that's the episode. Um, that'll Thank you guys do, for pig. Having me. That was really fun. <laughs> yeah, that'll do, course. pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Did you? George Miller made Mad Max Fear Road and also Babe. And you know what they said in Babe? Squeal <laughs> like a pig.